Hello, hello. <clears throat> oh, it's a wee bit loud. Hey, Carrie. Oh, shoot. That's... The door is still locked. That's right, I'm stuck. Hey, Carrie, good afternoon for you. How are you, my dear? How are you feeling? I might need Sam's help, because I forgot. Wait, what? Sorry, my own stream just warned me that it's for mature audiences. That's weird. Yes, it's my stream. Oh my god. How are you, Carrie? I wish I could stream till Sam goes on, but I've got meetings. He's currently debating the merits of the railway station at the inn. Hey, Fred Rock. Oh my god, they're still fighting. I'll leave Cyril and Henry to their grand debate. But how? How do I get in that door otherwise? I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Good day, sir. Wow, he doesn't want to talk to me. Oh no. Can we help with spicy brain hours? I'm stuck. I might have to actually ask Sam for help. Uh, or just go to bed. I have too much to do today to waste time sleeping. Damn it! The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. Well, shit. I've hung my dress inside. Aside from that, the wardrobe is empty. Well, shit. One second, I'm messaging the group chat. Hey, Ferwick, how far is Glasgow from you? I have no shame. Alright, I'm a wee bit stuck. Oh, that sounds interesting. I'll leave Cyril and Henry to their grand debate. I must say, last night has rather put me off using these toilets. Hey, Holly, how are you? Oh, that's right, I can... I think I can WASD? There's nothing else I wish to discuss at the moment. All right, I'm a wee bit... I'm a wee bit lost. <laughs> oh, really? I don't think anyone is home. All right. Hello. 
Hello. Oh. Yes. Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? Oh. That like a wheelbarrow? <laughs> Never mind. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. The door has been boarded up. The building looks like a ruin. Yeah, I'm, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. Hmm. No one here. I'm stuck in this town. I have no money. I don't think anyone is home. Oh my god. There's no one here. Hey, Hera. Good day. Yes. He sounds so weary. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? I saw go back. Sorry, lass. Thanks for your time. So. Bye. Speak to you later. The guy, the gents that were arguing in the pub. One of them has a key to this, to the post. And my stuff is there. I can see my stuff is there. But I cannot get in there. I don't know how to get the key. Unfortunately, I don't think the cakes are free. Um. I have no time for such things. Wow, you just straight up said, I got no time for prayer. Locked. What? How were pews locked? Locked as well. I think they all might be. I didn't know pews could lock. So basically I need to get into... It's locked. Jesus, no one's around. I found the vicar over here. Okay, the vicar's not here. Oh, wait, I can go this way now. I have no desire to go rooting about in there. Hey, DC. How are you? Wait, aren't you live? I saw your post earlier. I thought you might still be live. I have no desire to go rooting mm. about in there. I shall <gasps> see you People! Well, I say. Greetings, my dear. I'm sorry, Holmes. Hello, sir. Ow. A pause on your beauty, oh, for I, I shall see you again soon. What? Holmes? Wait. Holmes, are you? Some nerve. Y'all. Lady, you're blushing. Ah. Uh, I most certainly am not. not. Sorry, lass. No way through here today. Let me pass. Not today, by order of Lord Panswick. Oh, how'd your stream go? Now get back before you find yourself under a falling tree. Oh. There's nout even down there. You're not going to let me pass, are you? Now she gets it. Uh, Y'all really been out here chopping logs all day? Tell me, who was that arrogant man here just now? Just someone passing by. It sounded like you knew him better than that. Oh, oh. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's none of your business. Oh, oh. It's early. Everyone's giving me sass. My name is Thomasina Bateman. Oh, I. 
I know, but it's like y'all are. You're from around here, Thomasina Bateman. No, just visiting. Why the brown dude gotta be rude? Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No, I don't. Can you let me get back to my work now? No. Who is Lord Panswick? Our governor. He's the governor of the whole town. All right, Owen, back to work now. He lives in Bewley. Aye, uh, not far away. You cannot let me pass. But his lordship doesn't like questions or visitors. Now please leave us to our work. No. What is your name, sir? Horace. Are you in charge here? Right. I am indeed. What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? We're chopping down trees. There is no need to be sarcastic. We're employed by Lord Panswick. He's ordered us to gather logs from his woods. That's what we're doing. I believe so, yeah. Uh, let me Google on my phone because I also forgot that I can't easily tab out of this game. Dave Jones in Hobbs Barrow. He's, I found him. He's Charles Bryden, Saxnot Joe, and the Annoyed Man. Why are you gathering logs for Lord Panswick? Oh Panswick? my god, we're so nosy. Also. By heck, you ask a lot of questions. We're so nosy. If you must know, his lordship is repairing an old ruin on his land. We need the timber for the restoration work. Why are we How so intriguing? Lady. What type of ruin is Lord Panswick restoring? Okay, why are we being so nosy? An old chapel. I should rather like to see it. Not possible. His lordship does not welcome visitors to his estate. Wow, they even put that in caps. And these are his woods. Aye, his lordship owns most of the lands around these parts. Do you know where I can find a place called Hobbs Barrow? Right. Never heard of it. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Ooh. A fox? I have no desire to go rooting about in there. All right, let me. Ah, uh, there we go. Lord Panswick, you say? I thought I saw a fox. So how's everyone doing? I forget what's back here. <gasps> Where'd you come from? Good day, little one. What's your name? Wally took Myrtle. Pardon? He took her and ran off. I hate him! Is Myrtle one of your dolls? Yes! My favourite! Mummy made her for me! She's so beautiful! Wally is the worst brother in the whole world! 
I'm sorry to hear that. What is your name, little one? Jane. It's a pleasure to meet you, Jane. My name is Thomasina. This is a lovely little beck. It's where we get our water, miss. It's good for drinking and cleaning. Why did your brother take Myrtle away? He's just jealous because Daddy is letting me come with him to the market tomorrow. Wally thinks I'm Daddy's favorite, so he took Myrtle from me. What if he rips her to tatters? What if he feeds her to Mr. Bryden's goat? Don't worry, Jane. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a thing. Where did your brother go? I don't know. Home, maybe. But I have to wait here for Myrtle's friends to dry out. Oh! Your dolls look lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Aww. Today was their bath day. Do you know an old man called Leonard yes, Shoulder? Yeah. No, miss. Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Or maybe he's left her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... I have, yes. You have? We aren't supposed to talk about it. <gasps> Why not? Would you like to go there? Yes, I would very much like to. I'll tell you where it is if you find Myrtle for me. You will? Yes! But don't tell anyone about it or I'll be told off. I promise. Right? Please find Myrtle first, I miss her. I will. Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Or maybe he's left her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Hey, leaving town was great. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Oh, God. I clicked too far away. all this then I don't oh. think anyone is home oh that's right this leads me back to the train Bewley what can you tell me about Lord Panswick oh you've heard of his lordship then Yes. Do you know him? Aye. He comes into the village from time to time, gives sweets to the children, hires young men to work his land. He's well liked around here. I sense some hesitation, Mr. Tillett. Well, we kind of have an unspoken agreement with his lordship. He looks after us, provided we leave him alone. I don't follow. He likes his privacy. Some people do. No one is allowed to visit him. Do you mean to say that he's a bit eccentric? No. I've heard people got fired at when approaching his manor uninvited. Oh. Good grief! But is this true? Well, I won't be the one to find out. Farewell for now. ta -ra. I guess we'll be the one to find out. Because of course we will. Good day. Yes. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? His lordship commands much respect around here, lass. Keeps me busy with work. Why do you ask? Just curious. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Good day. Hello, miss. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Not a lot. I know he's in charge around here. Does he come to the village often? Not really. He has a manor out on the moors. Have you ever been there? Evans, no. Villagers aren't allowed there. Why not? Don't know. It's just the way it is. Hmm. Hmm. Goodbye. Bye, miss.
Hmm. No one here. <sighs> Who's yawning? I'm very tired Hello. of being broke. Good day. Hmm. Father Roach asked me not to discuss that with Mrs. De Plancy. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Wretched man. They say he is restoring a chapel near his manor. But for whom and to what god, I ask? Is he a man of faith? <laughs> I've barely seen him set foot in St. Edmund's. It doesn't stop him from acting as our God-given ruler. Stay away from him, pet. Don't get yourself tangled up in local affairs. Oh. I certainly don't intend to. Tell me about yourself, Mrs. De Plancy. About me? <laughs> what would you possibly want to know about me? I have been attending St. Edmund's Church my whole life. I always want to help where I can, so I sell my baked goods, and all the proceeds go to its upkeep. This place means so much to me. What can you tell me about St. Edmund's Church? Isn't it the finest building? Lady? It's been standing here since the 12th century. The box pews in the nave are very fine and date back to the 17th century. The door is open if you'd like to worship. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Right, the door is open, but the pews are locked. All right, I didn't know pews could lock. And I grew up Catholic. I never knew pews could lock. Oh, that's right, we're out in the moors. This appears to be a recently dug, unmarked grave. I better not touch them. They could be poisonous. Or more like it's a fairy circle. And the you could die. The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. Oh my god. Uh... The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. Really, DC? I did not know that. Yeah, I, I grew up Catholic, and I don't remember the pews ever locking. Margaret's Lookout. I wonder who Margaret is. Or was? What a peculiar name. The Devil's Toe. I can't quite see the resemblance myself. Oh my god, is the priest? Okay, why did the music change? Mr. Shoulder continues to prove himself elusive. Hey, Faison. Same. Your 
You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Why do we pick... Why do we pick up the chicken? He looks much too unruly to be picked up. Hey, Rex. You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Why are we picking up chickens? Leave this man's chickens alone! Mr. Shoulder must have dropped the matching glove last night. What was he doing better. in the alley? Rather rude of him not to come inside and see me. Alright, alright. The trousers feel damp. Freshly hung, or still wet from last night's rain. Oh my god, game! Uh... Slightly damp. Alright, alright, I guess... I guess all we have left is to go back to the bar and ask people about Lord whatever. The Devil's Tell. I've done quite a bit of walking. The game is not gonna let me go to sleep, is it? Now that I've talked to her, will the will the game let me go in and I can part? admire the craftsmanship from afar. The flowers have long since dried out. I don't want them. They are still locked. Well, they're like, come worship, but not, not in the pew, I guess. Ow. It's locked. Y'all y'all really don't want me to learn anything about this town. Hello. Hello. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Now to say Except don't be sniffing around his lordship's manor. You'll end up with a round of shot in you. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Just mind your own business around here. Goodbye. ta -ra. The window box is well out of reach. But, but there's a, a, a burb. I suspect the barrels are empty. Otherwise, the locals would be rolling them into their cellars. I'd rather not go into those horrible toilets again. Oh, absolutely. The fact that everyone's telling us not to means we have to. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? A most charming man, Miss Bateman. He looks after us here, eh? a good fellow. Where does he live? Panswick Manor, on the moors. No visitors allowed. His lordship likes his privacy. Goodbye. See you soon. All right, all right. At least he's still fighting. I'll leave Cyril and Henry to their grand debate. I'll leave Cyril and Henry to their grand debate. Is it time for bed yet? I have too much to do today to waste oh time Oh my sleeping. god. All right, I may have to look up a guide because now I'm stumped. I'm absolutely stumped. I've been walking around literally all day. Why can't... So Carrie, if you're still here, my stuff is in this, in this post. Royal Mail, Postmaster's Residence. This must be the local post office. It is, and I'd like to get my stuff. 
All right, I'm stumped. I'm gonna have to look this up. Pardon me for a minute. Because the game won't let me go to sleep. Oh, that's a noise I don't like. Okay, the game won't let me sit, the game won't let me do anything. The poor thing. Um, how do I get Thomasina's box from the post office? Oh, I need Jane's doll. So how do I get Jane's doll? I would not have figured that out. Just tell me how to get the fucking... Oh. Oh my god, someone just give me an answer. So I need to find this child. So that's Douglas. Hello. I yes. What do you know about Lord Panswick? He gave me some sweets once. Yeah, My Wally. Says that Lord Panswick has special trees at his manor that grow sweets on their branches. You think that's true, Miss? I think that's very unlikely. Me too. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss. So Wally is the brother of that child we ran into in the moors. I don't think anyone is home. Oh, that's the church. They aren't mine to take. I don't want to take them. The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. Have you found Myrtle, miss? Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Or maybe Wait he's left a minute. Her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Goodbye. Bye, miss. We know it's not the moors because we can't go there. But if we go past the bar, there's houses this way. Oh. 
there's a fucking kid. Hello there, my name's Thomasina. Yeah? What's yours? Wally. Jane tells me you've taken Myrtle away. And what if I did? That's a bit mean, don't you think? She kicked me! Look at this bruise on my leg! Oh, That does look quite bad. Why did she kick you? Because she's a little goblin. You don't know what she can be like. Besides, Myrtle is gone now. I've given her to the fair folk. That'll teach her. What? Who are the fair folk? The little people of the moors. I gave Myrtle to them. Little people? You don't mean fairies, do you? We call them fair folk round here. Wally, there is no such thing as fairies. It's two, and I gave them a doll. Where can I find these fair folk? Follow the tinker of the tiny bells. I hear them when the wind dies. They dance around their little house. But where is this little house? Just listen for the bells, you'll find it. <sighs> Don't think about bringing that doll back. That'll just bring bad luck for all of us. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? No. What do you know about Lord Panswick? I heard he owns the whole county. Have you met him? No, he lives out on the moors somewhere. But everyone does what he tells them to. Why's that? Because he has a lot of money. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why, but that tickled me. Hey, Pete. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Barrow? No. Goodbye. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Well, shit. I wonder if that mushroom circle is their home. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Oh my god. This child. Uh... I mean, I thought it was a fairy circle. The game said it was mushrooms. Let's see what's out there. I'd better not touch them. They could be poisonous. It looks like something has been buried in the middle. I'd better not touch them. They could be poisonous. Mm. It looks like something has been buried in the middle. The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. So now I gotta go back to this child. I have walked like 20 miles today in this game. Have you found Myrtle, miss? Wally told me you kicked him. Is that true? Wally is a liar. He took Myrtle and ran. He's such a little shit! You shouldn't really kick your brother, even when he does deserve it. <laughs> Wally told me he's given Myrtle to the fair folk. Now I'll never see her again. There, there, child. I'll get your doll back, don't worry. Where can I find the fair folk? Wally says he sees them on the moors, dancing and riding on the backs of birds. Hmm. But be careful. You don't want to upset the fair folk. How so? They'll put a hex on you. Jane, I'm quite sure there is no such thing as fair folk. Don't let them hear you say that, miss. Goodbye. Bye, miss. 
Okay, how much am I gonna have to go back and forth with this fucking doll? Wait, do I need a shovel for one of those fuckers? I need a shovel. Why won't the game just let me dig in the dirt with my hands? Also, this is the longest day in history. Okay, so I need a shovel. Can I talk to the old lady about the fair folk? Can someone do me a massive favor and look up how to get this damn doll back? Hello. Good day. Your cakes look delicious. I can assure you they are. You'll not find uh, I'm not better following in the entire Black Widow. county. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh my god, I just need to figure out how to get this fuck and Where's the grave digger? Like, telling me the grave digger has it doesn't tell me where the grave digger is. My guess would be the grave digger, but I've not seen him. Oh, that's the guy that I clicked on him. Hey, pirate. A peculiar name. The devil's toe. I can't quite see the resemblance uh, myself. Do I have a troll? God, how do I get to my inventory? I forgot. I don't have a troll. So that doesn't help me. I have no troll. So yeah, you're telling me to use a thing I don't have. Thanks. Oh, this guy. Well, we know he's not home. Thanks for pressing the button, pirate. Oh my god, how is it not the end of the day? I've walked to the moors and back like three times. Can I just... Is it just there? Okay... I have walked past this woman like eight times. Excuse me, do you think anyone would mind if I borrowed this trowel? How you help yourself, dear. Father Roach won't mind lending it. Just be sure to put it back when you're finished. Of course, thank you. It is more blessed to oh give than to receive. I would not have known that was a trowel. So... That's not. I better not touch them. They could be poisonous. It looks like something has been buried in the middle. This is the most tedious shit ever. Oh no. Thomasina, please stop leaving your toys lying about the place. What happened the last time you left your dolly under the tree? A fox ate it, madame. Yes, it did. Fetch it now, won't you? Then I'll fix your supper. Yes, madame. Wow. Now we got some kind of trippy... Josephine, I won't let the foxes eat you. Who's that you have there, little bird? 
Josephine. She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Yes. That's the gateway to their kingdom. That's where Josephine and I go to talk to the fairies. Now, listen to me, Thomasina. Yes? You're old enough now to hear this. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls. Wow. What do you mean? I'm oh, sorry, my dear child. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between fantasy and reality. Josephine is just a doll, and fairies do not exist. But, Daddy... Science is the oh great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Wow. Please, always remember that. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. What is it? Wow. Hogwash. Did Wally bury the doll, I wonder? Ah. This must be Jane's ragdoll. Oh, there's worms. Ew. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. What's up, How pirate? strange. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. At least I shall not return from Bewley empty-handed. Oh, all right then. Where's this fucking child again? Myrtle needs to be washed. I know it's because they're UK based, but it's actually weirdly nice to hear the dialect clearly be written how British people actually speak, versus clearly US writing being read by British accents to make it sound fantasy. Look. This child. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me put the trowel back. There we go, I put it back. Look, this is some Monkey Island level shit. I'm enjoying the game, but I'm also not the best at puzzles. This child better appreciate this fucking doll. I present to you, Myrtle. Myrtle! I missed you so much. Yeah, that was the LA Blade uh, interview. If somebody can grab now, that tweet from I Sam. I believe we had a deal. Hide and seek. Child. Back. Child. It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having <laughs> children. Oh, the game saved on its own. What's happening? She's gonna go run to that foxhole, isn't she? What's Wahi? <laughs> she went in that fucking foxhole. Jane? Jane, get out of there. Don't make me come in. Fine. Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. Let her get eaten by a fox! Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. Let her get eaten by a fox! There's nothing else I wish to discuss at the moment. <laughs> Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. Okay, let's not start telling me literally everything to do. I was just stuck finding the doll. 
Also, I think I put the trowel the back. too small for me to fit through. Oh, I didn't put the trowel back. I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand. Where is Zero? Uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself, clod by clod. That should do it. <laughs> I don't, I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, we have to Jane? go in the darkness. Jane? I've nothing I can use in the darkness. Jane, come out this instant. Is it Jane? I can't see a damned thing in here. I need a light source. Which means we probably have to go all the way back to our room and go get a fucking candle. I let, I, you know what? I'd leave her ass in there to get eaten by a fox. Sorry, I clicked too far. I'm being facetious. I'm not being literal. <sighs> Kenneth taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. A few wiggles and this lock should spring right open. Don't make me pick a lock, please. I hate lock picking mechanics in games. I've snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. Miss Bateman, I beg for your forgiveness. A matter of grave urgency has arisen in London, and I cannot join you in Bewley. I've packed your usual equipment and pray you will find the local find local assistance in my absence. I look forward to seeing you upon your return. Yours faithfully, Kenneth Murdoch. How very frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? It sounds like Thomasina's got some things to work through. I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. It's not quite 9 a.m. Wait. Where is my money? It's not in here. Get <sighs> it, you absolute liability of a man. It looks like everything else is in here. He Picks, took her money. Specimen trays, shovels. Oh, my chisel, I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. Oh my god. I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. Do you believe Stanley? No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still, I've been in worse situations. I've got a tab at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. I don't wish to carry around my heavy excavation tools. I'd rather not go into those horrible toilets again. Right? Like, I'm pretty sure Kenneth took your shit. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. All right, I need, I need lamp oil. Good 
Can I please have a new candle for my room? I'll go upstairs and replace it this evening. Can I have one now? It's not dark yet, Miss Bateman. I... Never mind. Goodbye. See you soon. Are they still here arguing? I'll leave Cyril and Henry. Oh my god, they're still here debate. arguing. You mean no one can give me lamp oil? No one in this whole fucking city. Or village. I don't think it's big enough to count as a city. Good day. Yes. I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How much coin do you have? None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. What do you want to trade? What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. What? What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. I don't know what he want me to trade. Thanks for your time. Hi. Speak to you later. Really, what can I trade this man? Jammed shut. The wood must have warped over the years. I've stored my case in there. A box within a box. I don't wish to take it. I don't want to take the painting with me. Uh, sorry, I'm super frustrated. Alright, alright. The poor thing. Well, let's go back in my crate and see if I can take anything to trade because I need my chisel. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. Murr, have you played this? I don't wish to carry around my heavy excavation tools. Well, so much for I suspect that. the barrels are empty, otherwise, the locals will be rolling them into their cellars. Uh, it's it's uh, really good. It's just a wee bit Monkey Islandish. Hmm. I don't think Mr. Crozier would be interested in trading his paraffin for this. No, that's not it. Hmm. I don't think Mr. Crozier would be interested in trading his oh, yeah, paraffin for this. Hmm. I don't think Mr. Crozier would be interested in trading his paraffin for this. Hmm. I don't think Mr. Crozier would be interested in trading his paraffin for this.
And I need the lamp, so I can't... There's nothing else I wish to discuss at the moment. Also, do you know how long I'd have to dig with a trowel? To fucking... Un... Hello. Good day. Um... <sighs> Why did you call Lord Panswick wretched? He hides in that manor of his and cares not for his people. It's 90% fun, 10% frustrating. The pews, you know. What kind of stories? That he shoots people on sight. Anyone that strays onto Panswick Manor. Good grief. Yet, he will walk into the plough and furrow and bar ale for all and be hailed as our protector. <laughs> I answer to God and God alone. Oh. Forgive me, pet. I shouldn't get so worked up. Not at all. I appreciate your honesty, Mrs. De Plancy. I'm trying to find Hobbs Barrow. Hobbs what? Hobbs Barrow, a local burial mound. The only place of burial I know about and care for is in this very churchyard. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. And also with you. <sighs> Alright. What kind of trade for lamp oil? Oh my, what the? Sorry, I'm looking for something. Oh my god, I would have never thought about that. So I need to go. Back to where I saw. I can't pry the fossil from the rock with my bare hands.
I would never have thought of that. But he... I'm sorry, giving this dude a fossil, he better give me a gallon of paraffin. Splendid. I've managed to extract it in one piece. How are we supposed... They mind to take. How the fuck are we... Ow. Ow, fuck, ow. Guess who already forgot to have a nose piercing? And I ran my hands down my face and it hurt. Fine, except I ran my hand down my face forgetting about the nose piercing because it doesn't really hurt. It's just I'm very aware of it, if that makes sense. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Uh, yes, I got it oh, last then. night. It is a beauty, that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. Uh, I got my ears re-pierced. And while I was there, I got my nose re-pierced. It's fine, it there didn't hurt. It wasn't so much hurt, it was like, oh, Thank you, I Mr. touched Crozier. my face. Well, the, what I like, though, is the stem on the nose piercing isn't super long. So, while I'm aware of it, it doesn't feel like something is scraping the inside of my nose constantly. That, that was my problem when I got it pierced the first time, is that the, the stem was very... For a nose piercing, to me, the stem was very thick. And where I went is where I've gotten some tattoos before. I just never got a piercing there. And they do the needle through your flesh. They don't use a piercing gun. And honestly, it was very quick. And I did like, I had that reaction eyes well up. Oh no, it was fine. Here, I've got other piercings. I've got plenty of tattoos. It was more a, oh boy. Now we, oh no, we gotta go this way, I think. Um, yeah, I've had nose piercing. I've had my nose pierced before. This isn't new. I just got it re-pierced, but it's not in the same spot the old one was because there's still a divot in my nose from that one. I, I also discovered how hard it is to take photos of yourself. I should fill the lantern with paraffin before I go in there. Fumbling in the dark may cause me to spill the oil. Oh no, Holly. I'm sorry. Yeah, I wanted to get the... I don't know what you call the... My lantern is fueled and ready for action. I don't know what you call it when you what the upper part of your ear is. Right. Let's put this lantern to good use. Vagal? What does that mean? <laughs> She's Jane. not human. Jane is a fucking fairy, isn't she? Oh. Oh, God. Oh, it's a badger. Goodness me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> really, get the fuck out. I'm sorry. That was too funny. Jane. Silly. What are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole? You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, Felix? you were. Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where oh. can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard, up the hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. My I mean... pleasure. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. Has she, though? Has she? Can we go to bed now? Like, I've been scared by a badger. 
Or do I have to go... I know, but she also tricked me into going into... Yeah, I'm on PC. She also tricked me into going into a badger hole. I can go in the As moors I trudge now. through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, uh -huh. the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. Oh dear. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break because I've been on a little over an hour and I need a bio and to refill my coffee. Um, so hang out for a bit. I'm gonna leave you with, J with Thomasina. And uh, I'll be back in two to five minutes. Uh, Mod, you have to come. If you were Thomasina, would you have just gone home at this point? Uh, chat while I am while I am away.
I'm back. Thank you. Are oh, we gonna die? What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh, well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? <laughs> I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife, and I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. You haven't seen Mr. Shoulder for some time? I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow? Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm. How odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago? You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Oh. Poor bastard hanged himself not long after. Oh, shit. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but they were an awful thing. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. Wow. Is your wife home? She's out in fields, lass. Pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye. Oh, My wife is a from. fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Wow. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. Ah, damn it. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of our crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Oh, it's not okay. What did your brother find? Samuel. Panda. Samuel were his name. Sorry. What did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know. But something went wrong. Afterward. He could barely speak. See. You couldn't make out a word like. That must have been hard. You lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. What? Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barrow, dragging timber in with him. You'd hear him hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing were dug up. Okay. The landers reclaimed it. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raise livestock. Even Lord Panswick. We grow feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Wait, is Bryden, um... Oh, it is. I found him.
Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. Well. No digging here, lass. Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Perhaps. But Samuel boarded up that barrow for a reason. You don't want to tempt the same fate, lass. I'm fine, Panda. I, I have already done the thing where I forgot about a piercing and ran my hands down my face. Luckily, I'm not wearing rings, because that would have really fucking hurt. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? Thanks for your time. Ta-ra now. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Lennon making bold promises, I see. It didn't hurt, but it was more like, ah, oh, fuck. Reckless. But yes, you can have a look at it. Thank you. Any road, once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. I can't walk. So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra. Sit on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really do appreciate it. Oh no, it was more of a, I know the thing is there. I can feel it. I just was frustrated, you know, when you like, put your hands on your face or over your head. And you're like, motherfucker. I probably should have brought my umbrella. It's a bit late now. A-R. I haven't a clue what that could be referring to. And my ears, I don't even feel it. Finally, here do. it is. Hobbs Barrow. This is it. This is what we did all this. Indeed, a barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Long Barrow. Oh, trust me, I was yes, very aware this of that. Make a fine entry for my book. What secrets do you conceal, I wonder? Oh no. That smell. Earthy and sweet. Hey, Dre. Oh. Three. More disassociation. Two. One. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. Oh, I pulled out a nose piercing before, and it's really unpleasant. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember hey, everything you. I've taught you. How you been? I have a feeling Happy you might year. find something special. How exciting! I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck. Thank you, Daddy. I don't like her father. Thomas Cena, we don't excavate with our bare hands. Did you give her a tool? Why is there just a trowel sticking in the dirt? Now I'm ready. Thomas Cena, we don't excavate, excavate with, with our, our bare, bare hands. hands. <sighs> I tried to use the trowel.
The game game. All right, I'm very confused. The game is... Really? I think? I don't know, actually. No treasures here. <laughs> Nothing here. be angry if I break the statue. I think her father's dead when when you're an adult. Treasure Da, 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 Daddy, da, da. I found the treasure. Look. Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. And Take good care of it. All right. I will, Daddy. I promise. And she dropped it. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Yeah, sure. In good time. Ah, oh, game. <laughs> I don't wish to carve anything into the rock. All right, all right. Yeah, I don't know if Sam voices the younger Thomasina. I mean, I could just ask them. Oh shit, it's getting dark. See, this is when you know the ghosts have Darkness shown up. Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the, the inn. inn. Yes. Sam did this well before uh, Baldur's Gate. Mm. Oh, shit. Oh. What in the hell? Oh, everybody's gone inside. What's happening? Oh. <gasps> There's a light on. Hmm. No one here. Right? But there's a light on. There's a light. There's a light, y'all. Right? Excuse me, that really hurt. Good evening, gentlemen. What are you gonna do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming. I am gonna knock his bloody block off. <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off. You heard the man. Charming. Oh, thanks. I've got water and I've got coffee. The cough is... Good evening, Mr. Crozier. Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. It is truly a beauty. You're most welcome. Yeah, I know. How long have you been I collecting fossils? I said coffee fossils? and water. Ever since I were a boy. Also, I'm an adult. I know that. Place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. 
All manner of creatures to uncover. Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave me today. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the Barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. But what do you collect? Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along, then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Okay, why is this dude playing the knife game? <gasps> a kitty! Good evening, sir. Uh, I'll leave you to it. I don't wish to wake him up. Hello again, Cyril. They're still here. Did Mr. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? Now bugger off and leave me to me drink. Well then. He seems yeah. even more wound up than usual. Yeah, but the kitty's asleep. And whatever that guy's doing, he does not want to talk to you. Yeah, it's a very small town. Oh no. Good evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. A mug of your finest ale, please. There we are. That's two pence on your account. Thank you. Just two pence? I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, remember what I said, Miss Bateman. There are stories connected to that place. Yes, yeah, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. Goodbye. See you soon. A lovely place to warm oneself. I'm also moderately concerned that we have not gone to the bathroom this whole time. There's one water closet. And I must just... say, last night has rather put me off using these toilets. Time for bed. Tomorrow oh I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Miss Bateman. I. How are you? Tired. Gonna buy you a drink? One won't hurt. Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. But worth trying? I don't need any further convincing. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. This man is married. Shoulder. Whatever he may be. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes? Why did Leonard Shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter. 
is proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sights steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your days sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plow tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. Hey, it's Kelly. Been a year since the old girl. I love one, Kelly. She had a horrible end, wasting away day by day. Consumption got her. She would know but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. Well, that's fucked up. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. I used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. She'd get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected at a favorite lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Lookout, we called it. Oh, That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him and I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. Oh boy. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. Oh. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A Damn. toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Damn. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. And another after that. And another. The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. Oh? I treasure the memory. I mean... Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I uh, mustn't. Sing the song. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right, then. Clasps, Celts, and arrowheads I'll try. To claw within my clutch And oh, if a shield I should espy I'll vow there ne'er was such With popish tricks and relics rare 
the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull. That's a song to teach a child. Yes, they're singing. That'd be good. Ugh. Hello, Thomasina. <gasps> That's the Emperor. Wh who are you? I'm the one that saved your father. What do you mean? No, that's Dave. You were that's here Dave. 25 years ago. My father. You were deep down with the others. That's you Dave. Were there and something went wrong. I dragged him out. Impossible. I helped him then, and I can help him again. I, I don't understand. Believe my words. You'll find proof in morning. Now go. I thought it was the Emperor's voice, no. One more thing. This is not a dream. Yeah, I realized it. That was all on the first day? Holy shit! That was all one day? Yes, Dave is Holson. Goodness, that was a terrible sleep. Girl, ain't you gonna take a bath? What's this? There's a strange stone strapped to the cover. A chicken. Oh, all right. Day one. Arrived after a decent day's ride from Bakewell. This is a curious place. Locals seem distant. I'm to meet my local contact tomorrow, so it will be an early night for me. I shall try to keep a diary of my stay here, and not give up by day three of the excavation as usual. Despite the thrill of possible new discoveries, I cannot stop thinking about my dear wife, and what if I shall have left her in her current state? I must have faith that she will conquer this bout of illness. Day four. True to form, my journal has been abandoned. Let that not speak for the excitement I feel for this excavation. After much preparation, we dig tomorrow. Such an exceptional site with a unique history. As for the dangers, we shall meet them head first. We are prepared. I also sought out a local wise woman yesterday, and she provided me with a tincture for my beloved's nausea, Gravidarum. I'm sure she'll be pleased with with it upon my return. <laughs> Lo, a place of miracles, a planted, a planted seed sprouted before our eyes and illuminated our path. Nature's laws ha hold no meaning here. But I clutch my tablet with the knowledge that, that it shall end this. Theta Epsilon Rosie. We found the code was simply in the singularity of the characters. All eyes must face f towards the seventh Archontic. When the sun and the two moons meet, the guardian shall be defeated. A dead language reveals a path. For thou art the moon, the chief of the stars. Listen to the things that I have said. Follow the words of my mouth. Reveal thyself to me. I heard a whisper, not once, again and again. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. What? It appears to be a journal, full of hogwash. Hey, pink lady. I don't recognize the handwriting. Maybe Stanley knows more about it. No idea what that is. 
I... My Latin is rusty. Good morning. How's your head, Miss Bateman? That was quite the tune you treated us to last night. To be honest, Stanley, I felt better. I take it you slid this journal under my door? I beg your pardon? The journal, Stanley. I certainly did no such thing. Nor could have anyone else. You're the only guest staying here. What's the meaning of all this? Do you propose that it manifested itself out of thin air? Hey, well, Fem. Uh... How are you? I'm sorry. I just don't understand how else it could have got there. Welcome, Raiders. What do you make of this stone? That's a funny looking thing. It's got a cockerel on it. Yes, but have you seen anything like it? What were y'all doing? What were you playing? I've missed a lot. Do you ever have strange dreams, Stanley? Me? I sleep as sound as a baby. I had one such dream last night. It was so vivid. Can someone give a shout out, please? What were it about? I was at Hobbs Barrow. Oh? But everything was different. Great peaks soared in the distance. And there was a creature. A creature, you say? Yes. A short, robed fellow. Eyes as black as pitch. It told me that my father had been there in Hobbs Barrow many years ago. But something went wrong, and the creature helped him escape. It said that I would find proof in the morning. Oh, the journal. You've had a premonition, lass. Please, Stanley, I've no time for that nonsense. But I'll admit it's a strange coincidence. May I? Now, what did I tell you about Hobbs Barrow? That I should leave it alone? Aye. Hogwash. Your what? dream reminds me of a story from my childhood. An old folk tale about Hobbs Barrow. What is this folk tale you mention? Well, when I were a wee boy, there were talk of a goblin. They say he lived inside Hobbs Barrow. Hence the name, Hobbs Barrow. Hob, coming from Hob Goblin, of course. Unfortunately, I don't remember anything else about it. I was told not to believe in such fairy tales, Stanley. Don't close your mind to such things, lass. I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you more. Perhaps, if I ever meet him. Are you sure there was no one else here overnight? Without doubt. How very, very peculiar. So, what does it say inside? Take a look. Take a look. It's well, in our I book. can't make head nor tail of it. Neither can I. Maybe someone else in the village can help you with it. Goodbye. See you soon. Ah. Good morning, Mr. Kemp. Good day, Miss Tompkins. Where did I'm you here come for his lordship's paper. Sorry, lass. Mr. Price hasn't dropped them off this morning. I heard he actually left the village yesterday. Indeed. I can vouch for that. Ma'am? Good day. Oh dear. His lordship won't be pleased. My sincerest apologies, Miss Tompkins. I'll come back in a few days. Ta-ra. Goodbye. Ta-ra. Who is Miss Tompkins? A housemaid in the employ of Panswick Manor. She comes by to pick up his lordship's weekly paper. I'm surprised newspapers are available in Bewley. Damn. Aye, his lordship gets what he wants. Lord Panswick likes to keep up with affairs from outside of Bewley. Aye, he has many interests around the country. What sort of interests? His lordship's affairs are his own business. Goodbye. See you soon. Jesus, that was all right. one fucking I need to convince day. Mr. Bryden to let me excavate Hobbs, Hobbs Barrow. Barrow and find out where this journal came from. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, then. Oh, the priest. Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman, what a pleasure to see you again. Have you tracked down Mr. Shoulder yet? Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. Indeed. 
What brings you to the square today? I'm meeting a couple of young congregation members to go over some scripture. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, Father Roach, but I have quite a busy day ahead of me. We will be at St. Edmund's, should you wish to join us later. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. A rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Aye, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land. Something I wholeheartedly disagree with. To which god his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. Why do you say that? Oh, my apologies. Don't listen to my oafish conjecture. Let us move on. What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. Do you recognize this journal? Hmm. What a tatty old thing. You ought to take better care of your possessions. Wow. It's not mine. Then whose is it? That's precisely what I'm trying to find out. Wow. I'm afraid I can't help you. I haven't seen it before. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. And also with you. I can't help it. I wasn't even raised that way. I was raised Catholic. Off. Oh. Ah, oh, the unmistakable charm of old Cyril. Sleep well, Holly. Have a good one. I don't think anyone is home. Ah! Thomasina! What are Good you morning, doing Arthur. here? You look a bit adult. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. Aye. My head is pounding. The fuck are you to doing you the out truth, here? Arthur, I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers- well, Stanley must be playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. Do you now? I had a splendid time last night. I, I even remember most of it this time. Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. Thank you too, Arthur. What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. How mysterious. I wonder who left me this journal then? Mind if I take a closer look? Please, go ahead. I can't help it. Whenever I go to a church, it's the just... writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Did it's the sketches probably mean anything father. to you? No, not at all. But they turn my stomach. You might want to show. Well, what do they say now, Jerry? Shouldn't you be manning the station? The line is down. Track damage between Bewley and Bakewell. No trains for a day or more. Does that mean I'm stranded here? For the time being, Thomasina. Capital. Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? Aye. She might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within Hearn Wood here. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. You're welcome. Why do people think Mother Mildred is a witch? Just because a woman lives alone in the woods doesn't mean she flies about on a broomstick. There's more to it than that. They say she lays with demons. Who are they? Oh, you know, local folk. Hogwash. Some also go to her for potions and spells. Spells? Come now, Arthur. Truth be told, she's a nice old lady. I sometimes see her foraging in the brambles around here. 
Will she burn at the stake sometime soon? You might think us backward in Beulah, Thomasina, but we're not that backward. You're calling Sorry, her a witch? Arthur. Only meant to tease. Goodbye. Uh, Zero, are you streaming today? Aren't you going to miss me? I hate you, Daddy. Those oh, are strong words for such a little lady. I want to come with you. We've been through this, little bird. You can't come with me this time, but we'll go to Seabra next month. I promise. Oh, what a dig that shall be. I hate you. Well, I love you. See you soon, little bird. <laughs> And that was when he went away and had the accident. And that's why her mother doesn't like her. Oh, I'm sure it is, Pink Lady. I'm sure it is. Because you could see that coming a mile away. <gasps> the Witch Lady. Please, forgive my intrusion. Are you Mother Mildred? Some call me that. I prefer Mildred Walker, given as that's my name. Apologies. Thomasina Bateman. I think we met at Bewley Station. I take it Panswick's men have cleared off. Good riddance. Those ruffians would cut their own noses off if he asked them to. How's your sightseeing going then? I... Save your words, young lady. I know you're no sightseer. And I know exactly why you're in Beulah. Beulah. You won't get far by lying to me again. I'm sorry, I... I recognised you the moment I laid eyes on you at the station. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, it's quite a striking I family knew it. resemblance. I knew it. You have your father's eyes, Miss Bateman. What? You knew my father? Such piercing blue eyes he had. <laughs> a handsome young man, William. He was here, in Bewley. Oh, yes. A long time ago, mind. Twenty-five years by my reckoning. But I'll never forget those eyes. Do you know Lord Panswick? I know his labourers make a mess of these woods, the brutes. The man himself hasn't graced me with his presence. You've never met him? Not since he were a wee lad. A maid brought him to me with a sore stomach. It were all the rich food they were feeding him. Now more. Can you tell me anything about Leonard's shoulder? I know of him, as is the nature of such a small town. I also know he invited you here. Little escapes you, Miss Walker. So they say. My path rarely crosses with his. Let's put it that way. But he's a nice enough fellow. I see. I don't see. Why was my father in Bewley? He were helping Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow. You must be jesting. Do I look like I'm jesting? What do you make of this stone? I A W. I haven't a clue. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket or a talisman of some kind. The moors are steeped in folklore. I understand you might be able to help me comprehend the contents of this journal. A journal, you say? Yes, it was slipped under my door. I have no idea who it belongs to. It contains peculiar drawings and strange passages. Arthur Tillett told me you might be able to help. I'm not a witch, you know. I didn't think you were, Miss Walker. Good. Well, let me take a look, then. These drawings mean nothing to me, I'm afraid. No. Oh. But I think this belonged to your father. Told you. I told you. Say that? This journal contains an account of when I met him, you see. You don't recognize your own father's handwriting. It's been so many years since I've seen it. What can you tell me about the excavation? Well, not much. I only met your father twice. The last time yes. he asked me if I knew anything about binding magic. 
binding magic. He said he needed it for the excavation. Hogwash. My father is a man of logic and reason. Why would he be asking about such nonsense? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think you do. Anyway, I know nothing of magic and told him so. He seemed disappointed. I never saw him again, but I understand the excavation went ahead. Samuel bride and hanged himself not long after. Reason enough for you to stay well clear of that place. How did you come to meet my father? One might say I have a reputation oh. in these parts. Folks from all around come to me for help with their ailments. Fernwood is abundant with flora that, if mixed correctly, will cure almost any ill. Your father must have caught wind of this, as one day he came to me, asking for a cure. A cure for what? Your mother were with child, and she was suffering the most terrible nausea. Oh, you're right. Adam. I made something to help her. This, this is incredible. Look, me too, pink lady. The landlord of the Plough and Furrow told me about a folk tale associated with Hobbs Barrow. Something about a goblin. Are you familiar with it? No doubt there is such a tale. Name any beastie you can think of and someone round here will have a story about it. My thoughts precisely. Uh... Do I have any mods still around? What do you think my father meant by binding magic? I've no idea. He didn't explain more and I didn't wish to pry. Hmm. This just doesn't sound like my father at all. You'll have to ask him yourself. Oh, uh, Carrie, can you get Sam's tweet about today's stream? I'm afraid my father has been incapacitated train. since I was a child. He cannot speak nor move. Terrible. Oh, I I'm sorry. You said that the flora here could cure almost any ill. Almost, my dear. But your father's affliction sounds beyond my abilities. You never saw my father again after the excavation? No. I always assumed he just went home. Hmm. Who excavated Hobbs Barrow alongside Samuel Bryden and my father? From memory, it were just the two of them. Charles Bryden mentioned there was a third man involved in the excavation. Is that so? Well, you best ask him about it. He knows more than I do. Thank you for your help, Ms. Walker. Miss Bateman? Yes? Remember what I told you when we first met? You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. Why? Something terrible happened to Samuel Bryden in that barrow. Whatever they found down there, I'd wager it got to your father too. Tell me you won't disturb Hobbs Barrow. I can't make that promise, Mildred. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is something unnatural about that place. We must seek to understand the world by rational means, Miss Walker. One cannot abandon reason. Oh, Thomasina. Thomasina. Oh, another disassociation. Thomasina? Uh, I think so. It's one about a stream come today, here this yeah. Instant. I'm playing with Josephine. She can wait. This is very important. Hmm. <laughs> Is little Thomasina wearing heels? What is it, Mummy? It's... it's your father. Daddy's home? No, my dear. I must go to Bakewell with haste. Miss Bowes will look after you whilst I'm gone, is that clear? Where's Daddy? He's had... an accident. What happened? He's come off his horse. Silly Daddy. Will he be alright? Of course. Of course he will be fine. Your father is as strong as an ox, but I need to go collect him, all right? Can't I come too? No, dear. Miss Bowes will look after you. But I want to come. Go pick up your dolls, then come inside, all right? Yes, Mummy. Josephine, it's time to go inside now. Poor child. Where did mommy go? When she said she had to go, she meant right then and there. We're not going back in there. 
I helped him then, and I can help him again. Are you... Sir! Arthur, you won't believe it. The journal belongs to my father. He was here in Bewley. Arthur? Hello? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to remember something. What is it? I'm not sure. Something in the woods. It will come back to me. You say your father were in Bewley? Yes. Mildred said that he helped Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow 25 years ago. Well, I'll be. Let's talk about it tonight at the plough. Arthur, I must tell you about the dream I had. I was at Hobbs Barrow and there was a creature. It told me it saved my father from something inside and that I would find proof of this in the morning. Sure enough, when I awoke, the journal was in my room. Mildred confirmed the journal belonged to my father. The creature That's told when me I would it could leave. help my father again. <coughs> it was merely a dream. I don't know what to think anymore. I would Arthur. leave. Arthur, Arthur, are you listening? Fine then, we'll talk later. I hope you piece together your memories. I waited for Arthur to turn around and be that fucking goblin. Ah! There's the jump scare. Who's this dude? Hello, dear. Good day. I believe we've met. Miss Thomasina Bateman, the famous antiquarian. My reputation precedes me. I can assure you it does. And you are? James. Are you a painter? You see this beck before you. Look at the water. See how it tumbles and falls. I seek one spot on which my eyes can rest. Be it a stone or a small corner of the current, I meet it with my gaze. And out of the tumbling and falling, a new land rises. I see a new world. You certainly have the eloquence of an artist. What do you make of this stone? It looks antique. You might want to keep a hold of it. What do you know of Lord Panswick? A fine gentleman. Now that is someone who commands respect. Do you know him personally? No, I, I don't think anyone can really claim that. But what a tiring subject. Shall we discuss something a little more exciting? Do you know Leonard Shoulder? A man of Bewley? Yes. I care not for the men of Bewley, only for the visitors. Do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I'd like to know more about you, Thomasina. No, I'm good. What time do you like to rise in the morning? How do you like your tea? What makes you happy? Dude. Late, with three spoons of sugar and spending time with my husband. You disappoint me. I sense no truth in your words. Are you a woman of dubious principles, Thomasina? You ask too many questions. What are you painting? A new world. Quite the ambition. Indeed. My ambition knows no bounds. He's going to Can kill I see us. It? Not yet. It's not finished. But such a world is not complete without you in it. You flatter me, James. Nonsense. Say you'll let me paint you. Certainly not. <laughs> my Helen of Troy doth protest. Don't fret, my dear. When the time comes, I shall call on thee. If you say so, James. Goodbye. See you soon, my dear. Okay, Raphael, what the fuck? It's locked.
They are still locked. Okay, didn't the father say that we he'd be like in church if I wanted to join them? <gasps> the lady's not there today. Ugh. Hello. What the fuck? The church cake I never got to eat Excuse because me, I have sir. no money. Yes? Did you see a young girl with blonde hair pass by here? No, lass. There you are. Are you Thomasina Batman? Yeah. No, thank you. No, why do you ask? Oh, I'm rather desperate to find her. I invited her all the way out here only to let her down. Are you Mr. Shoulder? I, I am. Heavens, I'd given up on finding you. Sorry, I don't follow. Apologies, I'm not sure why I lied. I am Thomasina Bateman. Oh, how marvelous. Please take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. You've proven to be quite the enigma, Mr. Shoulder. I'm mortified. I offer you a thousand apologies. You see, I've been bound to my bed these past few days with a terrible fever. How dreadful. Well, I take it you're feeling better now? I, I were on me way to find you when I stopped here to catch me breath. I've not much go in me these days. I'm sorry to hear that. I were worried you'd have given up on me and left town. I had no idea what had become of you, Mr. Shoulder. I spent a good amount of time pounding on your front door. I'm embarrassed. I, I really am. I've been doing my best to sleep through the fever. I am so very sorry. Please accept my apology, Miss Bateman. Fine, Mr. Shoulder. I've come all this way. Let us speak of the business at hand. Marvelous. I've just learned that my father was part of a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow some 25 years ago. Why didn't you mention this in your letter? What? Where did you hear that? I have my means. I swear Miss Bateman, I had no idea. Hmm. I take it you will also deny delivering me my father's journal? I'm confused. What journal? My father's journal was slipped under my door at the Plough and Furrow. It wasn't you who did this. I've been bound to me bed, lass. Hmm. What an extraordinary coincidence. You are following in your father's footsteps. It would seem so, Mr. Shoulder. Why did you invite me to excavate Hobbs Barrow? I've always been curious about the colorful folklore surrounding the place. My father told me all sorts of stories about it when I was a wee fellow. Stories that some folk around here take a little too seriously. Especially after those lads entered the barrow a while back. Tell me more of this folklore you mention. It is said. But Hobbs Barrow is home to a goblin. Everyone in Bewley has some version or another of this story. But the version my father told me as a child described the Barrow as a thin place. The goblin were deemed to be the guardian of this so-called thin place. What do you make of this strange stone? A carving of a cockerel? Yes, it was strapped to my father's journal. Do you think it could have something to do with the previous excavation? Possibly, though I'm not aware of the motif having any meaning around these parts. Is this your glove? I've been looking all over for that. Where did you find it? In the alley behind the plough and furrow on the night of my arrival. Were you there? As I say, I've been bedbound for several days, Miss Bateman. How odd. Can I please have it back? Here. Thank you. Did you know my father? I don't believe so. What's his name? William. William Bateman. He was in Bewley for at least a few days, from my understanding. I'm sorry, lass. The name doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. Are you sure you had no idea of my father's involvement in the previous excavation? I'm quite sure. A most fascinating coincidence, but 
Nothing more than that. I'm starting to wonder if it's more than mere coincidence, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bateman, I did not take you for a credulous individual. I'm none of the sort. This is my father's journal. Incredible. Can I look inside? You may. Look at these drawings. Wonder what it all means. You and I both. It all feels very out of character for my father. I'm sure you'll find the answers beneath the soil, Miss Babe. How did you know about me? I saw your interview in the Bakewell Times. A young lady traveling about the land, digging up barrows. Perfect for the job. I've managed to find Hobbs Barrow, but Mr. Bryden is yet to give me permission to excavate. Is that so? Keep trying. He'll relent eventually. Perhaps you could have a word with him. Oh, no. A lovely young lass such as yourself has a better chance of changing his mind than a shaky old goat like me. Hmm. You told me in your letter there would be no issue gaining access to the Barrow. I didn't foresee anyone I wrote to you. I'm sorry this has been more complicated than anticipated. Don't give up yet, Miss Bateman. Keep trying with Mr. Bryden. But why do you wish to excavate the Barrow? I want to see what those lads found in there. My curiosity has grown over the years. Now it is time for the mystery to be solved. I must say, I am rather eager to find out what's in there myself. What can you tell me about the previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Oh, it was 25 years ago, or thereabout. Back then, Bewley were undergoing a period of great strife. Samuel Bryden hadn't harvested a single crop for two seasons. Even Hearn Wood were sick. Berries went to rot almost as quickly as they grew. Folks started to believe the ground were blighted. Disease spread through the livestock too. People were going hungry, a panic set in. That sounds terrible. Aye, but I managed to keep myself fed. These things happen in nature, but the blame for it all fell on Hobbs Barrow. It was long said that a goblin made his own way. A rumor took root that the goblin were not best pleased with the villagers. In revenge for some unperceived slight, the goblin placed a curse on the soil itself. The villagers believed that ridding the barrow of its lodger would put an end to it all. Hogwash. My father would have paid no heed to such tales. Whether it were his intent to join the excavation when coming here, I do not know. But whatever it were that Samuel Bryden and those lads did inside that barrel, people say it did the trick. The crops started to grow back, and health returned to the livestock. Yuli were no longer in the grip of dark forces. Hmm. You must understand. Folk here are a superstitious lot. They don't want you disturbing whatever it were those lads did. As far as the villagers are concerned, the problem were fixed. The thought of another excavation must be conjuring panic that you'll undo whatever it were they did. This does explain a lot. And it's also why I'd venture nobody around here wants you to touch the place. Except for you. I want to know what's there. Surely you don't believe these tales of goblins and curses to be true? Not at all. However, I suspect those lads did find something in the barrel. But did it have any connection to failing crops and dying livestock? No. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. Coincidence reigns supreme. So what do you think they found? That is for us to discover, Miss Bateman. Who was the third man who joined my father and Mr. Bryden on the excavation? I'm afraid I don't know. Although I'd heard about the excavation and I were intrigued by it. I mostly stayed at home during that time. The atmosphere in the village was rather too tense for me liking. And besides, the excavation were undertaken with an air of mystery about it. Hmm. Tell me more about this goblin. Some said he were a mischievous little mite, snatching newborn lambs and smashing windows with pebbles. 
Others said he were friendly, there to lend a helping hand in times of strife. The latter of which makes it all the more surprising as to why the previous excavation took place. My father's stories put the goblin in the mischievous category. Saxnot, he called the creature. I recall one such anecdote. But Saxnot entered Bewley and ordered a pair of boots to be made by the cobbler. However, when collecting them, he insisted on paying for them with a bag of so's teeth. The cobbler was so scared of angering the goblin that he accepted. A colorful tale indeed, Mr. Shoulder. Has any explanation been offered for why this Saxnot cursed the soil? Your guess is as good as mine, lass. I had a peculiar dream last night. I met a creature at Hobbs Barrow. I suppose you might say it was a goblin. It told me it had saved my father from trouble inside Hobbs Barrow. I'll admit the coincidence of this is somewhat astounding. A remarkable coincidence, but nothing more than that. But there is still one thing that puzzles me. The goblin told me proof of its claims would await me in the morning. Surely enough. I awoke to find that my father's journal had appeared in my room. Very queer indeed. Mr. Shoulder, you invited me here, to a town I'd never heard of, only for me to discover that my own father was here 25 years before. And not only that, but that he was also embroiled in some sort of superstitious hysteria which goes against everything he ever taught me. Something is wrong here. This must be more than mere coincidence. It's strange, I'll give you that. But please remember who you are, Miss Bateman. What is a thin place? A place where one can walk between worlds. Where the flesh meets the spirit world. Hmm. Just superstition, of course, as you will know. We're peas of the same pod, Miss Bateman. I knew you wouldn't be frightened by a few old stories. It will be interesting to see what those lads found in there. Certainly. Thank you so very much for responding to my letter and for coming here. We have some great discoveries to make, you and I. I sincerely hope so. And the chance to follow in your father's footsteps. Right. Time for me to shift these old bones. I'm to take me a spot of the plow and furrow. I'll be there all night should you need me assistance. Thank you, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sorry again for giving you the runaround. I promise I am not beyond redemption. I won't let you down again. See you soon. I was starting to wonder if Mr. Shoulder even existed. Oh, I think you're spot on, Pink. The day was starting to test me. <laughs> Sorry. The word coincidence Since. felt insufficient to explain what was happening. It was after that first conversation with Leonard's shoulder that I started entertaining thoughts of a truly irrational nature. What if my dream wasn't just a dream? What if it was all more than simple coincidence? What if that thing really could help my father? Good day, little one. Hello. What's this? A fiddle bow? There's no string. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Don't be shy. I don't mean you any harm. What are you doing out here all alone on the moors? Do you live here? Hmm. Would you like me to fix your bow so you can play your fiddle again? Yes? Most peculiar. Perhaps I can mend the bow for her. 
If memories of my childhood violin lessons serve me right, bowstring is made from animal hair coated in a waxy resin. The strings don't vibrate without it. Hmm. <coughs> what a peculiar name, the Devil's Toe. I can't quite see the resemblance myself. I've no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Wee chickens. Mr. Shoulder told me he'd be at the plow and furrow. So we knocked anyway. Good job, Thomasina. Good job. All right, the strange little blonde child is gone. Oh shit, it's 10.30. I should wrap up soon. Cause work. I guess. See, there's a fresh grave and that girl ran down the road. Hello, Wally. You gave the door back to my sister. It wasn't very nice of you to bury her favorite toy, Wally. I gave it to the fair folk, and you stole it back from them. You don't really believe in fairies, do you? You're old enough to know better. They're real, and thanks to you, I'm cursed. There's no such thing as curses either, Wally. Go away. This is where I dug up Jane's ragdoll. I guess I can't click on the, uh, on the crow. Oh shit. Mommy? Get away from the fire, Thomasina. What are you burning? Nothing. Just waste. Now go inside. Ab. Abrax. Mummy, what is this? Waste. Burn it. Good day, Mr. Bryden. Miss? I... I'll stop you there. I know what you're going to ask. No, I haven't changed my mind. There'll be no digging here, lass. Mr. Bryden, allow me to explain. There has been an astonishing development this morning. Yes? My father was with your brother during the excavation. Oh. Yes. Can you believe it? I had no idea he had been here. The answer's still no, lass. I saw what happened to poor Samuel. I won't risk the same happening to anyone else. But... That's enough now. You can feast your eyes on that hovel to your heart's content, but there'll be no digging. No questions. I'm not interested. But... Off with you. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. <laughs> I don't wish to carve anything into the rock. Well, all right then, I guess we're going back to town.
Wait. Look, Mr. Bryden, my father's journal. It confirms he was with your brother during the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Ha! Take that away from me. I'll be having none of that. What do you make of this stone, Mr. Bryden? It was strapped to my father's journal. Wait a minute. Let me see that. By God. Wait here a moment. I need to get something from inside. All progress. I waited for what felt like an age. I now realize that Mr. Bryden must have been in a great debate with himself, wondering whether or not to share his own piece of the mystery with me. The goat stared at me, seemingly in pity, as I stood there in that rolling fog. Finally, Mr. Bryden emerged. Now then, as far as I know, what I have here is the only thing that Samuel brought back from Barra. Take a look. Oh, holy shit. Incredible. A pair. That's been in my drawer ever since Samuel passed. I suppose it might be important, so I kept it safe. Fate is clearly playing a part in your arrival, lass. Please, Mr. Bryden, allow me to excavate Hobbs Barrow, a place that is no more than dirt and stone. <sighs> You're not going to give up, are you, lass? I'm not. Samuel managed to say one thing about those men that helped him. I think it's time I tell you. Yes? He stuttered out that one of those fellows could barely walk after they got out of there. Tongue-tied two of the men were. My father. You what? My father. He had an accident around 25 years ago that left him bedbound and unable to talk. Aye. Could be him. My mother told me it happened in a horse-riding accident. Samuel boarded up that barra for a reason. Something unnatural occurred, I know it. Mr. Bryden, we must rely on our rational faculties to explain any- Promise me you'll be careful. Any sign of trouble, leave without hesitation and we board that accursed place up again. Understood? Wait, you're giving me permission to excavate? <sighs> Aye, against me better judgement. I don't have the energy to stop you, lass. Thank you so much. I am grateful. Don't make me regret my decision. Take Samuel's stone. Are you sure? Aye. Give it back to me when you're finished, though. I promise. Thank you. I'll be sure to show you my discoveries, Mr. Bryden. I'd rather you don't. Now then, I've got things to get on with. I don't suppose you can spare any labour to help me with the dig? Don't push your luck, lass. Market's on today. Plenty of able-bodied men about. Ta-ra now. And like that, I finally had permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. As exciting as that was, I was distracted by what Mr. Bryden said of his brother's associate. There was no doubt in my mind that father was the stricken man he spoke of. No worries, I'm gonna end because work, but this, we will, we will probably come back tomorrow and finish Hobbs if we can. You told me he was crippled after coming off his horse. Why did you lie to me? To protect me? To stop me from following in his footsteps? You failed. And so did Charles Bryden. You're welcome. We're gonna fast one a raid, so You should have anywhere. said no. You should have never given me that stone. Oh, shit. Uh, with that, we're going to see, we're going to go raid Panda. Um, let's see if I can get the credits to roll. Because Streamlabs does not want to cooperate. That was exciting, yeah? That's not what I want.
All right, credits did not save from yesterday. So, God, they're slow. We're gonna go raid, don't go anywhere. If I could spell, I'd be dangerous. Awkward-ish. Right? Oh, we're gonna go back. Barrow Goblin Raid. Right? Like, that was a whole lot to get done. All right, so we're going to see what Panda's up to. Remember, tonight, the rivals of Waterdeep reunite for a special one-shot on the CNE Games channel, uh, DM'd by the one and only That Bronze Girl. No idea what she's gotten planned for us. Uh, but also check my socials at 12 Pacific or thereabouts for a couple other things regarding the game tonight. And um, I'll see you at 4 Pacific, 6 Central over at Cine Games uh, on Twitch. So, uh, actually, let me do the command. I know it's late for the UK folks, but it is gonna be recorded, obviously. It'll be on CNE's uh, Twitch and YouTube, so. 12 Pacific, 2 Central, 3 Eastern. Keep an eye on socials, both everyone on Rivals, SCNE Games, Idol Champions, and uh, see you in about eight hours. So let's see what Panda's up to, and I'll see you later. Bye, y'all.